Morning, coming up here on GMA, the latest on the travel chaos that was compounded by storms yesterday. There's a lot going on at the airports, but we will talk about what you can expect as far as the number of people preparing to travel for the holiday weekend. And then Robin's exclusive interview with Ralph Yarl, the Kansas City teen who was shot when he mistakenly went to the wrong house to pick up his little brothers. He's going to tell his story for the first time. You'll see it all right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, Texas is getting billions of dollars from Congress. We'll tell you where it's going and who it could be helping. Plus, you've heard of snacking when it comes to food, but what about exercise snacking? What you need to know about the trend also coming up. And before 6.30, a spicy court battle brewing over Taco Tuesday. The restaurants involved and what both sides are saying. As we go to break, a quick look at Transguide as the sun is slowly coming up on another scorcher here in South Texas. Looking live at I-37 and Jones Avenue. No problems to report in that area. If anything pops up, we'll let you know in a couple of minutes. Right now on GMSA, a 16-year-old's in the hospital after a shooting on the city's south side. What we've been able to learn this morning, plus... I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington. Coming up, what a senior U.S. official tells ABC News about the deal between Moscow and the leader of that Russian mercenary group behind the heavily armed uprising against the Kremlin. That story ahead. And looking out there with live cam, 78 degrees for now. We are looking forward to a tiny little break at the end of the week. Uh, it'll still be hot, but at least not as hot. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Time to rise and shine and try to beat the heat. It's Tuesday, June 27th. Thank you for starting your morning with us. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, not too bad out there for now. 78, we can handle a morning, a morning before the heat. We're a little hopeful going into the end of the weekend and next week. Mike Ostrage will say, let's uh, focus on today first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I got to get through today first. Yeah. Yesterday was 104. Today's going to be 104, record 105. I mean, just it's that brutal. Yeah, and air conditioners just can't keep up and Electric bills, yeah, but uh, at least there is a little light at the end of the tunnel by, well, starting really going into the weekend and next week. First of all, uh, we do have mostly clear skies right now. We'll see a few clouds developing this morning. 79 right now, 80, and that's the only uh, reading in the 80s up there at Canyon Lake, so that's good news. 75 at New Braunfels, 78's there, Castroville and Divine. Dew points, they actually dropped down slightly just in the past hour. 73 now here in town, but still very high around Randolph at 77, 75 there at Castroville. So heat index readings, 85 still Canyon Lake and 82 here in town. Yeah, you're greeted by the humidity. At least the humidity does drop down somewhat in the afternoon. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side this morning. We do still have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, the darker pink shade around the area. Nothing posted for the Hill Country formally, but of course, just because there's not an advisory posted, it's still very hot everywhere. So you want to, you know, lots of water, lots of sunscreen, lots of shade, if at all possible. 92 at noon, 105 high, 104, pardon me, High temperature later on this afternoon will feel like about 107, 108 when you factor in that humidity. This, yesterday and today, the two hottest days of this week. Then we trim a degree or two each and every day and get on in toward the weekend. And we'll start to see some, some subtle pattern changes to the overall weather pattern. And that's some good news. Maybe could it include rain? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, had problems earlier. What's going on? Well, some of it's cleared out now, Mike, uh, but I'm spotting a lot of pinks and orange and it looks like this shot from Transguide giving us a great sunrise there at 281 at Encino Rio and also great shot of traffic. You can see the north and southbound lanes don't look too bad. If you're heading through the area in the next few minutes or so, you have a nice view and some nice roads to accompany it. So let's get a look there at our map because uh, the big topic of the morning at least for right now has been some of the construction we've been talking about. None of it has slowed folks down though. A lot of the overnight stuff has already wrapped up and we still have stuff to look forward to later today. But more on the travel times if you're heading into San Antonio, I-10 eastbound. Bernie from the journey from Bernie, I should say, is about a 24 minute commute along 281 southbound. If you're heading in from Boulevard, you expect about a 26 minute drive time. And the same goes if you're traveling along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. But again, great view here at 281 at Encino Rio. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and as always make sure you do the same guys this morning san antonio police looking for two people that shot a 16 year old late last night happened just after 11 p.m in the 700 block of mizuno way on the city south side near mitchell lake 
Police say the 16 year old was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the hip. SAPD says the teen told officers he was able to get home and drive away after he was shot at a TJ Maxx warehouse. That scooter is now trying to pinpoint the crime scene and find the suspects involved. We are working to learn more about what sparked a house fire overnight. So this is video from the scene after it was put out. Right now the details are limited and we can tell you that it happened a little before 1130 at a home on Indiana and that is not far from I-37 on the east side. You can see that the flames had, you know, burnt the front of the home. We are working to learn more about how it happened. As we get that information, we will share it with you. A Southside man facing a murder charge after police say he shot his own roommate. Police arrested Armando Regalado after investigators say he shot and killed the man he lived with after the two got into an argument. Police say Regalado lived in a smaller house on the same property as the victim on West Ansley Boulevard. The man who died has not been identified. Regalado is being held on a $150,000 bond. New details emerging this morning after the mutiny against Russian military leaders. We are learning more about a deal brokered between the Kremlin that prompted the head of a mercenary group and his troops to retreat. ABC's Justin Finch brings us the latest this morning from Washington. This morning, new details about the apparent deal between Moscow and Yevgeny Prigozhin, leader of the Wagner mercenary group that nearly revolted against the Kremlin. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News Prigozhin stopped his troops Saturday and took a deal to go into exile in Belarus after it became clear that Russian defense leaders were going to align with Vladimir Putin. The official also says Prigozhin and his troops got closer to Moscow than previously reported, about 100 miles from the Russian capital, making much faster progress than they imagined, shooting helicopters and a fighter jet along the way. An enraged Russian President Vladimir Putin claiming the armed rebellion would have been suppressed in any case and condemning the organizers for betraying Russia, though never mentioning Prigozhin by name. Prigozhin also broke his silence from an unknown location, saying in an audio recording that his goal was to protest Moscow's attempt to dissolve his forces into the Russian army, not take down Putin. The senior U.S. official who spoke to ABC News believes Prigozhin will head to Belarus, but will not likely stay there, adding that, quote, his long-term survivability is hard to calculate. Former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Bill Taylor says that Prigozhin's actions undermine Putin's strength. The big picture is the weakness of Russia, uh, both at the top and even on the lines, uh, and the strength and the strength of the Ukrainians, uh, as well as the preparation of the Ukrainians for this counteroffensive, which has been building for months, um, comes at a great time for the Ukrainians. The president of Belarus, a top Putin ally, called the Wagner Group rebellion painful to watch, adding that he called for his own troops to be at full combat readiness as a precaution. Meantime, Russia's foreign intelligence agency announced it's closing its criminal probe into the revolt. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And this morning we are hearing more from audio from Porter President Donald Trump. In that audio you can hear him talk about having classified documents in his possession after leaving office. Take a listen. Wait a minute, let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. Yeah. But look, look at this. You attack and the July 2021 recording is connected to the 37 count federal indictment against Trump. He is accused of mishandling classified documents found at his Florida home. Special counsel Jack Smith's indictment says the recorded conversation centers around a Pentagon document on a potential attack on Iran. I was just saying because we were talking about it, <laughs> and you know, he said he wanted to attack Iran and what yes, he's in the papers. Well, this was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to Deep figure out a, a... The Trump campaign shared a statement on the recording with ABC News. It says in part, quote, The audio tape provides context proving once again that President Trump did nothing wrong at all. 
The president is speaking rhetorically and almost quite humorously. The president did nothing wrong, end quote. So you can look for the latest on this story on GMA starting at 7. The state of Texas plans to pay a company hundreds of thousands of dollars in an effort to block migrant crossings on the Rio Grande River. According to a copy of the contract, Cochrane USA was awarded a base contract of $850,000 to deploy floating border barriers in the river. Governor Greg Abbott says the first thousand feet of it will be placed near El Paso, or rather El Eagle Pass. Record state Texas is scheduled to deploy the barriers early next month, but according to the International Boundary and Water Commission, the governor has not obtained permits to deploy buoys from the commission itself. Looking ahead, Texas getting billions in federal funding to help expand broadband internet availability statewide. The Biden administration announced the Lone Star State is getting $3.3 billion, and that's the most of any state in the country. And part of the president's 2021 bipartisan infrastructure plan, it total, that is $42 billion being spread over all 50 states to give millions of people and small businesses access to the internet. Right now, 2.8 million Texas households do not have broadband access. Another law going on the books this year could make deadly drunk driving crash a lot more expensive. Starting September 1st, drunk drivers convicted of manslaughter in Texas will have to pay child support if parents or underage children were killed in the crash. Governor Abbott signed the bill into law last month. Uh, under the law, the driver will pay restitution until the child turns 18 or graduates from high school. And if the driver goes to prison, they have to start paying child support by one year after they get out of jail. Right now, 610 at 78 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, a spicy court battle brewing over Taco Tuesday. The restaurants involved and what both sides are saying. And after the break, a look at some of the stories trending right now on our website. That's coming up next. And let's look out there with a live cam. So this is a calm 78 degrees compared to the triple digits we will face this afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike for the very latest this week coming up. Training now on KSAP.com. Two adults who drowned while saving three children in the Guadalupe River near Seguin were posthumously awarded the Carnegie Medal for their efforts. This incident happened back in June of 2021. 30-year-old Victor Villanueva and 22-year-old Cassandra Kendrick died while trying to save three young boys caught in strong currents in the river. All three children survived. The award is the highest honor for civilian heroism. In Austin, a litter of two-day-old puppies found abandoned in a plastic garbage bag in near triple-digit heat. That's according to officials with Austin Pets Alive. One of the puppies died from its injuries. The seven other pups are now being cared for in foster homes. The three-year pause on federal student loan payments will end soon. That will happen regardless of how the Supreme Court rules this week on a White House plan to forgive billions of dollars in student loan debt. Payments be caught paused because of COVID will resume in the fall no matter what, but an estimated 43 million borrowers could see their balances decreased or erased altogether if the court decides the plan can go ahead. And things appear to be good on the roadways from this angle. Let's check in with our Stephen Cavazos. I think things look pretty over here too. Uh, 281 at San Pedro, you can see a nice shot from TransGuy. They've been treating us well this morning with a lot of these great views. You can see, yeah, we're off to a great start. Uh, and right now, not spouting a lot of traffic in one of the north on the northbound lanes, but southbound lanes getting a little bit busier there as folks are getting ready to hit the roads here and get their Tuesday morning commute rolling. Be on the lookout though, we did have a stall reported along I-10 westbound at Loop 410. Really not causing an issue, but just be on the lookout if you see that stalled vehicle out there. TxDOT Hero Trucks may be out there as well, so move over or slow down, folks. Giving you a wide look at the map now at 614, you could just see a lot of that scattered construction. We talk about what's happening in and around the area. And if your travels are going to take you through I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio, maybe a little bit later this evening, just be on the lookout for this road work, likely part of the northeast expansion project. We'll see this work take us all the way up until 5 a.m. July 2nd, but the meantime, there's a full closure taking place along 35 southbound along the frontage road from Old Austin Road to Forum Parkway. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of all the closures that are happening in your area. But I did want to get one last shot here at 281 at San Pedro. Again, great shot from Transguide. A lot of these uh, cameras that we have right now are capturing a great sunrise and traffic doesn't look too bad either. I think we have a new summer mascot. Goes has a picture to prove it. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if this is the same squirrel that's been photographed the whole time. <laughs> just, but, I mean, if it water. is, this, this poor little guy. Yeah. It's just like, I can't take it anymore.
It's yeah. just too hot. He's just, yeah. And he's in the shade, too. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. But, you know, don't forget about your squirrels and your dogs and cats and everybody else outside and yourself as far as lots of water, lots of shade. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right. Yesterday we showed in the uh, Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day, 8 to 14 day outlook, and it is encouraging going into next week as far as slightly better than average odds of seeing above average rainfall. And in that same time period, yes, still wanting to lean toward the above normal side. But again, the hottest temperatures, this darker shade right here moves off to the east into the Gulf of Mexico and then go a little further beyond that and still slightly better than 50-50 uh, chances of seeing above normal precipitation. And still, even though temperatures are going to be in the above normal side, not that extreme heat. So it's an encouraging long, long range forecast. And we start to see some of the um, initial changes coming about later on in the week. Nice view out there at 410 and I-10. Maybe a couple of clouds will hang around this morning. It feels like 82 degrees out there at the airport, 85 Canyon Lake and 75 at New Braunfels. Yesterday, of course, we did hit 104, 106 there in Hondo, 111 in Del Rio, and it's going to be pretty much the same situation again today, 104. Um, boy, 99s, I think that's being a little bit generous with this computer model in a couple of spots. Once again, out in the tropics, nothing is going on. There's the leftovers of what was uh, Tropical Storm Cindy that is not going to Hurricane Center saying that's not going to redevelop and nothing else is out there. So here's the high, which is sitting right on top of us right now. It was down to the southwest a little bit last week, and that's why we had some of that that northwesterly flow, had some of those afternoon showers, thunderstorms. Now this thing's moved in on top of us and we are seeing the really hot temperatures to yesterday and today 104s. Then we start to shave a degree off tomorrow and the next day as this starts to slowly work its way off to the east into the Gulf of Mexico. So what that will do is, first of all, not have as hot a temperatures. And you saw in the long run, the CPC Climate Prediction Center, where the hottest temperatures were over here with that high. So that moves off to the east as we go into Sunday and the first part of the week. Still, it's going to be hot, but like I said, not as hot. And also with this pattern, with that thing not sitting on top of us, at least there will be the opportunity, maybe a sea breeze shower, maybe something popping up here or there as far as rain chances. We're not going to have that tight lid on top of us. So that's more encouraging as far as something to fall from the sky to help uh, with the fact that we haven't had rain, it seems like, in forever. 102 tomorrow, 100 by Friday, Saturday for the 1st of July, and then 99s Sunday and Monday. Woohoo, 99. It's a so pair of aces in our deck, buddy. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> there is some encouragement. Yes. Good. Thank you, Mike. Time right now, 620, 78 degrees. And just ahead, a Kansas City teen who was shot after mistakenly going to the wrong home is speaking this morning exclusively with ABC News. We're going to have a preview in your GMA first look. I'm Jason. I'm living with HIV and I'm on Cabanuva. It helps keep me undetectable. For adults who are undetectable, Cabanuva is the only complete long acting HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabanuva is two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's really nice not to have to rush home and take a daily HIV pill. Don't receive Cabanuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or if you're taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabanuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabanuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and time. Tiredness. If you switch to Cabanuva, attend all treatment appointments. Ready to treat your HIV in a different way? Ask your doctor about every other month Cabanuva. Every other month, and I'm good to go. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Tell me what happened when you go to that address. 
Just over two months ago, then 16-year-old Ralph Yarl was just being a dutiful older brother, picking up his twin siblings from a friend's house in Kansas City, only he went to the wrong address, and when he rang the doorbell, the man on the other side of that door, 84-year-old Andrew Lester, shot him. Yarl survived, but has a long road of recovery ahead, and this morning, for the first time, he's telling his story to Robin Roberts. What do you want people to know about you, Ralph? I'm just a kid, I'm not larger than life because this happened to me. I'm just going to keep doing all the stuff that makes me happy and just living my life the best I can and not let this bother me. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of Robin Roberts' exclusive interview with Ralph Yarl. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. In your consumer headlines, Amazon is looking to partner with thousands of small businesses this year to establish its hub delivery system. And here's how it works. The program will pay those businesses to deliver an average of 30 packages a day to customers. Recruitment is underway in 23 states. Hey, y'all, listen to this. The Fight for Taco Tuesday trademark is getting, shall we say, spicy? Believe it or not, the phrase is actually trademarked. It's been owned by a regional chain called Taco John's for 34 years. Now, the company responded to a petition Taco Bell filed with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to cancel the trademark. Taco Bell claims the phrase Taco Tuesday is so common anyone should be able to, quote, make, sell, eat, and celebrate tacos on Taco Tuesday. Well, Taco John's parent company, Spicy Seasoning, says it has the right to enforce its trademark. Interesting. I always thought it was a social media thing. I didn't know it was a restaurant thing. And now it's legal and it's going to cost somebody some money. Interesting. <laughs> Time now, 625 and 77 degrees for now. Glad you're with us. Still to come at 630, the San Antonio Zoo celebrating a new litter of pups, but they're not the kind you're thinking of, where visitors can expect to see the new babies this summer. Aw, still cute. And if you've heard of snacking when it comes to food, but what about exercise snacking? What you need to know about the trend, also coming up. Sun is coming up. Getting a look at the roads right now, 281 at San Pedro. We've seen some increase in traffic flow in the last 10 or 15 minutes. We'll check back with Stephen coming up in the next half hour of Good Morning San Antonio on this Tuesday morning. Stick around. This morning on GMSA, the trial of a man accused of killing his wife is now a mistrial. What that means for the case and what happens next. And outside with Lycam this morning, a hazy sunrise over South Texas after another scorcher. Mike says there is some relief in the extended forecast. We just are going to measure it by degrees. And a good morning to you. It's 630 on your Tuesday. It is June 27th. The camera's like way over <laughs> here. Way over here. Scooch over a little <laughs> yeah, closer. Come on closer. Hi. 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 Thanks for joining us today. And as far as relief, first of all, I've got to get through today because today's mm -hmm. going to be just a, a repeat of yesterday. We had 104. We're going to hit 104 again today. Okay. 105 is the record. But we start to see a subtle change in the overall weather pattern as we go into the latter part of the week and as we go into the weekend and again next week. So. We've got some of that haze out there this morning. We've got our morning humidity. At least it does drop down a little bit by the afternoon. Nice shot of the uh, skyline downtown there. This is 410 over there at I-10. Temperature right now at the airport stands at 79. Dew point actually dropped a little bit from what it was earlier this morning at 73. It's still You'll notice it when you step outside this morning. And temperatures around the area. The only... Uh, Reading in the 80s right now is up there at Canyon Lake. Everybody's got plenty of humidity, so we do obviously have some of those heat index readings, upper 70s and low 80s around here. We've got low amounts of mold as well as pigweed showing up. The update account's going to come out in about an hour or so. Still some heat advisories, excessive heat warnings in effect through 9 o'clock tonight, excuse me, until 8 o'clock tonight. And nothing is posted in parts of the Hill Country, but that's still, it's going to be hot out there, so you still have to use all the precautions. So partly cloudy, warm, humid this morning, and then, like I said, 104, mostly sunny later on today. The heat index, even though the humidity does drop somewhat, it's still going to be about 107, 108. And then the next few days, we go down a degree or two each and every day. And once we get into the weekend and next week, we start to really see more of that pattern change. So it's going to be upper 90s and 
maybe some rain. At least the opportunity is going to be there. We'll take a look at some of the long range computer models coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? I'll take a slight chance. Not bad, but uh, right now we are taking a look out on the roadways. 35 in New Braunfels. Things have been off to a pretty good start over in my department. You can see there we don't really have a lot. Uh, we actually have a lot more folks. Pardon me in the north and southbound lanes and there at 37 at Jones Avenue. Our morning commute hasn't really experienced a lot of trouble, but we have spotted a lot of stalls. So a few of them reported. This is a one we talked about a little bit earlier along I-10 westbound near Loop 410. It's not causing an issue for drivers, but just something to be on the lookout for. And as we take a drive over here, it's another one spotted at 410 northbound at Gulebra Road. Again, not causing an issue for drivers, but these areas tend to get pretty crowded with folks as the morning commute does get rolling. So as a friendly reminder to you, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway and make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights out there. Giving you a wide look now at our metropolitan area, this is good news. Lots of green on the screen, so if you plan on hitting the roads in the next few minutes, nothing should really slow you down. In fact, if you're heading into San Antonio, that same trend continues. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about a 24-minute commute. 281 southbound, no need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bolverde, 26 minutes at this hour. And along I-35, it's not too awful from New Braunfels in the southbound lanes, 27 minutes to the Alamo City. One last look here around town, 10 at Proband, 35 north at Loop 410, getting a little bit busier, but I'll keep a close eye on the roadways and still have plenty of construction to talk about. I'll tell you what you can expect coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for the person who used a car horn and a gun to ruin a West Side man's morning. They say the man was shot after investigating a honking horn outside his home. Katrina Weber has that story live near downtown. Katrina, good morning. Is there any update on him? Well, good morning. Uh, police tell us that that man is being treated at a hospital for a gunshot wound in his arm, and they say that wound is not life threatening. Uh, police found him at a home on Brady Boulevard that's near Highway 90 and Couples Road. The call about the shooting came in a little after 4 o'clock this morning. Police said the man told them he heard a someone in a car honking a horn outside his home, and when he went out to check on it, someone shot him. Apparently, though, he didn't know he was shot until some time later. He was taken to a hospital by ambulance, and police say there are a few uh, inconsistencies uh, there are a few inconsistencies in the story about how this happened. They say that the man told them that he was standing right outside his home when he was shot. However, they say another person told them that he had actually gone down to the curb and was standing near the car when he was shot. Again, they are trying to sort all this out, but either way, they are trying to track down that shooter. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The fallout continues after three San Antonio police officers were charged with murder. 46-year-old Melissa Perez died Friday morning at an apartment complex on Old Pearsall Road. Now, body cam video released on Friday shows the moments leading to Perez's death. Police were called after she allegedly cut the wires to a fire alarm system. An affidavit states that one officer saw Perez pick up a hammer and break a window. You can see officers open fire moments later. Chief William McManus says Perez was suffering from a mental health crisis. The officers charged in her murder, Alfred Flores, Nathaniel Villalobos, and Eliezer Alejandro are out on bond. Police say that the officers are temporarily suspended without pay, but they are going through the termination process. District 7 Councilwoman Marina Arrete Gavito, one of the newest members of the City Council, commented about the shooting. I think it also highlights that we as a community need to do more to address mental health crisis in, in our city and really lead there. Um, we're a compassionate city and we need to make sure that we're responding to mental health crises. So we can assess the situation and learn from it because we all know we would never want this to happen again. In a statement, President of the San Antonio Police Officers Association, Danny Diaz, expressed the union's condolences and says that the chief followed all necessary protocols. It's been nearly a month since a man was shot and killed at North Star Mall, and so far, San Antonio police have not made an arrest. One employee tells Case Hats is affecting his business. On Sunday, June 4, shots rang out at North Star, sending shoppers into panic mode. San Antonio police say the incident that killed 33-year-old Adam Glass was a, quote, targeted and isolated incident, but it still has some shoppers nervous about going back. The man you just saw there, Stacy Coburn, says customers' concerns are cutting into his barbershop's bottom line. Just empty hallways for me because times I would walk through and like, wow, you know, 
it was, it was like a ghost town. Again, not just the barbershop itself, but just the mall, you see the difference. Coburn tells us his barbershop is often confused for the one where the shooting happened, that, that getting loyal clients backed into his chair has been a challenge. North Star Mall management says it has a robust security system in place. Meanwhile, a six-year-old murder case could be getting a do-over after a mistrial. Guadalupe Contreras is accused of killing his wife Elizabeth back in 2017. Contreras was on trial for almost a week until the judge declared a mistrial after San Antonio police turned in evidence related to the case over the weekend. The defense argued it needed time to look over that evidence, so the judge declared a mistrial. Right now, there is no timetable for when the new trial could take place. A Texas resident is being treated for malaria after catching the potentially deadly disease. It's one of three cases in the country that was caught without a patient traveling elsewhere. The Texas Department of State Health Services says the person likely got it while working outside in Cameron County in deep south Texas. The state wants to remind everyone to protect yourselves from mosquito bites with insect repellent and to wear long sleeves and pants when working outside and to drain standing water to limit mosquito breeding. Right now, 638, 77 degrees. And here's what's coming up next on GMSA. Important news if you're looking to add more exercise to your daily routine, you may want to try exercise snacking. Coming up on GMSA, what you need to know about the trend and how you can get started. Welcome back, 641. According to the CDC, adults need 150 minutes of physical activity a week to stay healthy. It might sound like a lot, but new research shows that just short bursts of activity throughout your day can have an impact. A Sarah Costa reports is known as exercise snacking. Too busy to exercise? You don't have to work out for hours at a time to reap the benefits. A new trend called exercise snacking is changing the game. It involves incorporating short bursts of activity into your day instead of one long workout. I think the important, real important part is to just to not stay stagnant for hours at a time. An exercise snack is a brief snippet of exercise, usually lasting a minute or two that's repeated throughout the day, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Some simple exercises that could make up an exercise snack include air squats, planks, sit-ups, push-ups, and lunges. One idea is to choose four exercises and perform each 30 seconds with 20 seconds rest in between. Do this for five minutes an hour every hour during your work day. A study published in the Journal of Aging Research showed exercise snacking can improve leg muscle function and size, and other research has shown climbing stairs for just a few minutes throughout the day can improve your cardiovascular health. Especially if you're, you're in a job where you're sitting a lot, um, is to, to get up and move around a, a few times an hour if you can. And remember, a little activity at a time can make a big difference. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. We love the bulldog. Uh, yes, I mean, whatever works on. around your house. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, sad to say, it doesn't include actual snacking. I know. We, mm. we were hearing the promos yesterday, and I yeah. was excited. I was like, oh, great. Finally, we can have a little snack while we work out. But no, that's That's why not you have what to modify the exercise routine to your specific needs. Exactly. So. That's you can have a candy bar. Included. so. All right, let's check in with Stephen Cavazos at 6.43. What's happening, sir? Well, I've been getting my uh, workout in by moving, so uh, that has as much as I'm going to get done. You're ready for a triathlon at oh, this yeah. point. Yes. At this point, yes, but we're almost at the end of the light there. Or at the end, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But, uh, you know, the good news that we have this morning is traffic's been pretty light, thankfully, throughout the Alamo City. Let's get a quick look there at 35 North at Loop 410. Uh, not a bad shot, but getting busier minute by minute now that the sun's peeking out. You can see it there at 35 at New Braunfels. But as I mentioned, stalls have been the trending issue of the morning, folks. I-10 westbound at Loop 410. We have one that's still being reported by TxDOT, and it's not causing any issues for drivers. Drivers, but it's something to be on the lookout for. I do have to take a drive over here where we have another stall at 410 northbound at Gulebedo Road. Again, not a problem for drivers, at least right now, but get more folks out on the roadway. We're going to start to see some of that congestion creep in. Not spotting it yet, though, just a lot of that scattered construction, as I mentioned. I-10 in Kendall County, be on the lookout. Bridge work will take place up until June 28th, so we still have one more day to go of that. But that work should take us all the way up until 3 this afternoon. We'll see alternating main lane closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to Johns Road. And as I mentioned, uh, be on the lookout for those Texas crews. It is hot out there. And uh, I just, I mean, I've been outside moving these boxes. I'm just, 
tired of it. And That's your extra hot. snacking. It is. You extra know, sna exercise snacking. You should have seen yeah. me yesterday lift the dolly. It was it was pretty impressive. Yep. Was yeah. it the Barbie thing we were talking about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit of triceps yeah. working here. So. There you go. Well, that's good. I, that's I don't maybe. know if this dog has the best name or the best idea when it comes to the summer heat. Best or, idea. Or the best pool float. <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, how oh, cute, Carmelo. A little jealous of that dog. So <laughs> at least we're getting into now uh, the weather pattern with a little bit lower humidity in the afternoon. So if you do get in the pool and hop out, unlike last week where it was just kind of still hot, the water would evaporate a little more quickly off your body. So you cool down much more quickly once you get out of that pool. So anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. There's a little bit of haze out there starting off this morning with some of our humidity. We do have heat index readings right now, mid upper 60s and even a mid upper 70s. What am I thinking here? And even some low 80s, 83 Canyon Lake, 82 at the airport. Couple of clouds maybe this morning and then we're going to see obviously just plenty of sunshine around here. 92 at noon and yeah, once we hit that noon temperature and and Temperatures just seem to skyrocket. We're going to gain about 12 degrees throughout the course of the day. We make it up to 104 later on. And of course, we will have that heat index out there right around 108 and obviously higher off to the west and to the southwest. Let's jump ahead to the weekend. Nothing's going to be changing today through the end of the week. We're going to have maybe a couple of morning clouds, sunshine in the afternoon. But by the weekend, a couple of extra clouds around here. Now, I know this looks like it's completely cloudy, but just as kind of scattered clouds. But the one thing, take note, not only will we have a few clouds here and there, but also this computer model does have a couple of rain chances. Now, it's well off to the west there. And again, it paints things in with a broad brush but at least there's going to be that chance for some rain. And that's going to be the situation even going into next week as well. The opportunity will be there for a couple of showers uh, in the Edwards Plateau, maybe a few sea breeze showers popping up as well. The reason for that is the high, which is sitting right on top of us, is going to continue to work its way off to the east. And again, it, it takes that lid off the atmosphere and that which is preventing anything from developing as of right now. And that's going to at least allow the chance for some rain to move on in here. And with that, we will have slightly lower temperatures. So once again today, like yesterday, 104, and then we're going to be right around close to the normal or the record high temperature of 105. Now, temperatures will go down one or two degrees each and every day as we go in through the rest of the week. And finally, by Sunday and Monday, we'll only be, I say only, still four or five degrees above normal, but 99s, a couple of extra clouds around here, and at least there is the chance or the opportunity is going to be there for some uh, rain to pop up. So we're seeing the pattern move a little bit. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it won't be as hot by the weekend. Right. Thank Still you. hot, yeah. but better. But and, better. And we've all agreed that three, four degrees does make a huge difference. Oh, yes. yeah, indeed. Yeah. I mean, and this is going to be five or six comparing today to what we see Sunday and Monday. What a treat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. 648, 77 degrees. And looking ahead, over half of all women say their finances have worsened in recent years and they're more burnt out than usual. How you can keep yourself from burning out tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam, the sun is up and so are you. Thanks for starting your day with GMSA. We'll be back to wrap things up after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the travel chaos that was compounded by storms yesterday. There's a lot going on at the airports, but we will talk about what you can expect as far as the number of people preparing to travel for the holiday weekend. And then Robin's exclusive interview with Ralph Yarl, the Kansas City teen who was shot when he mistakenly went to the wrong house to pick up his little brothers. He's going to tell his story for the first time. You'll see it all right here on GMA. Okay, 6.52, it's hard to believe, but July is almost here as we get ready to start the new month. There are several KSAC community events we want to let you know about. So July is Disability Pride Month, a time to celebrate people of all abilities with a wide range of needs. We are teaming up with our KSAC community partners for a phone bank on July 20th. It's all in support of Project MEN, and here you can see some information on your screen. Project MEN works to improve the quality of life for those living with disabilities and illnesses through refurbishment, 
reuse, and distribution of medical equipment and other assistive technology. And then on July 22nd, there will be a medical equipment donation drive. On that day, you can bring your gently used medical equipment to the Wonderland of the Americas. If you can't make it then, you can drop off items anytime Monday and Friday between 8 and 5 p.m. at the Project Men headquarters. That's at 5015 Wurzbach Road. We have a list of the most needed items on our website. Hey, before we go this morning, there's a baby boom happening over at SeaWorld of Texas. Over the past two weeks, SeaWorld has welcomed four California sea lion pups to the family. So SeaWorld says these four babies have joined 37 other sea lions and seven harbor seals at birth. Sea lion pups usually weigh about 15 pounds and are two feet long, but they can grow up to seven feet and weigh 700 pounds. SeaWorld tells us the mother and pups are doing well here in San Antonio. They're at SeaWorld's Pacific Point Preserve. And it's been the dream of a lot of little girls out there for decades living at Barbie's Malibu Dream House. So now the favorite accessory in Barbie's world has come to life. This three-story look-alike Barbie's iconic mansion looks like a set from the upcoming Barbie movie. So there's a dance floor, a giant pink slide, and a huge swimming pool that features floating letters spelling out Ken. <laughs> Barbie fans can stay in the Dream Mansion listed on Airbnb for no charge. So booking opens at 10 a.m. on July 17th for two one-night stays for up to two guests on July 21st and 22nd. The Barbie movie hits theaters on July 21st, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. And now this list is no charge, but those places have those hidden fees, cleaning fees, all of that kind course. of stuff. Of course. Well, I would think. Where's the Barbie Corvette? The Barbie Corvette? In the garage. Parked, yeah, garage. parked in the garage. In, in the four-car garage. Yeah. Okay. You just got to take the slide down to, <laughs> to ride it. Yeah. 654, 77 degrees. Well, might as well have a Barbie jet there, too. Why not? All right, guys. Uh, well, you know what we are spotting over here is a great sunrise at 281 at San Pedro. As we get a quick look around town, you can see the north and southbound lanes don't look too crowded at this hour. A lot of folks getting ready to drive off into their Tuesday and really not a lot of slowing you down. Some of it is the same issues that we saw earlier along I-10 westbound at Loop 410 and the same stall reported over here at 410 northbound at Gulebita Road. Again, not slowing folks down, but check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway. Wide look, the map does show that we are off to a good start. I have not spotted any congestion creeping in on our map, which is great, especially if, if you have to go grab that cup of coffee in the next few minutes. Quick look at some of those travel times. If you're heading in this early, still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound. 30 minutes, 33 along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia, and it's a 32-minute drive time heading in from Floresville, but a nice sunrise here, Mike. I'm not sure if it feels the same, though, outside. As long as you're inside the air conditioning looking out, it feels fantastic. Yeah, beautiful sunrise on tap, and we're going to have plenty of sunshine all day long, and that just means things are going to be heating up very, very quickly. It feels like 81 right now, 76 at Stinson, 75 down there at Pleasanton, 92 already at noon. Just to put it in perspective, the normal high is 93, and then we're going to be up to 104 just like yesterday. Again, heat index to deal with, just brutally hot out there, but at least we, well, first of all, we have the advisories and the warnings in effect through this evening. Temperatures will drop a couple of degrees each and every day, and then just upper 90s by the first of next week. Excited about later in the week then. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.